If you have viewed our videos on simple electric motors, you will know that these motors exploit the interaction of magnetic fields to create motion. Battery operated or direct current motors use the fields created by permanent magnets and electromagnets. I'm pulling the end off of this DC motor. These are the permanent magnets. This is what they look like. As you can see, they are powerful magnets. This structure is the motor's rotor. You can see the coils here. They are wrapped around iron cores. Attached to the rotor is this device. It is a rotating switch called the commutator. It feeds electricity to the coils. These carbon contacts, the brushes, are connected to the battery and bring electricity to the commutator. As the commutator rotates, the contact points change. This changes the polarity of the coil magnetic fields, creating a powerful push-pull interaction with the permanent magnets. A push-pull that creates rotary motion. Interestingly, most DC motors will also function as electrical generators. I have connected an LED to the power connectors on this small DC motor. Spin the motor shaft and the LED lights. Electricity has been created. Small DC motors make excellent generators for projects demonstrating the creation of electrical energy from wind or water. This is a model water wheel. When falling water rotates the wheel, electricity is produced by the small generator. I've mounted some DC motors on a base allowing for some experimentation. Connect a battery to the terminals and the motor spins. This configuration also allows the connection of one motor to a second motor, creating a motor generator pair. I used a short length of vinyl tube as a coupler. Connecting an LED to the generator and connecting the battery pack to the motor, we can see the LED glows. Electricity is being generated. In an industrial electrical plant, the energy spinning the coils typically comes from water moving through a hydro dam or steam produced by nuclear fission or the burning of coal. Efficiency is a major concern when designing these industrial plants. It is important to know what percentage of the energy consumed is actually converted to electrical energy. Let's calculate the efficiency of this basic motor generator pair. We can do this by calculating the power used by the motor and compare it to the power produced by the generator. Electrical power can be calculated by the formula I squared times R. That's current squared times load resistance. This produces an answer in watts. These two meters are set to measure the current. This one measures current flowing on the motor side and this one, current flowing on the generator side. I'm assuming the resistance is almost the same on each side, consisting primarily of the meter shunt resistor and the coil windings. Don't attempt this if you are not familiar with safety procedures when working with electricity. And note that it is possible to damage an incorrectly connected meter. With our meters connected, we are ready to run. Connecting the battery pack, the system runs. The motor is driving the generator. Here are our numbers. On the motor side, we have an average of 1.67 amperes of current. On the generator side, we have 1.31 amperes of current. Here is the I squared times R calculation. I don't have a value for R, so I left it as a variable. On the motor side, the system consumed 2.79 times R watts. While on the generator side, the system produced 1.72 times R watts. We can calculate the percent efficiency of this system by dividing power produced by power consumed. 
times 100. I'm assuming resistance R is the same on both sides. R drops out of the equation, producing this result. 62% efficient. This means for every watt of power put into the system, we only get 0.62 of a watt out. This inefficiency largely comes from mechanical friction and electrical resistance. I have been asked if it is possible to electrically connect the generator back to the motor, creating perpetual motion. The generator drives the motor, which in turn drives the generator. Looking at the efficiency of this system, 62%, you can probably see why that won't work. The laws of thermodynamics also have something to say about the viability of perpetual motion machines. Check out our video Build a Water-Powered Mill for instructions on creating a model hydroelectric plant and visit our website hyloroad.com for more science and technology related videos. <laughs>